a pop-up appearing on the screen now. So if you just consent to that, you'll stay in the room. And without any further ado, I'll hand you over to Alicia. Thank you, Rob. Thank you very much for having us. I'm here uh, on behalf of Student Support and Development in DCU. Annabella Stover couldn't be here today. She sends her apologies. I'm hoping I got the key points here. I'm hoping I can communicate them to you. And um, any questions, anything that's not clear, happy to chat at the end. I'm, I'm aiming to fly through my slides and then leave plenty of time for the discussion at the end. And Rob can hopefully jump in and give me a hand with the techie bits because as he always does for, his, for this project, he's always behind the scene helping us with the techie bits. So what I'm going to talk to you today about it's um, uh, DCU's Discover program, which, as you can see, is a hybrid approach to transition. So I'm going to very briefly give you some context. Uh, what do we understand by tra transition? Why this approach? Why this program, basically? What is the rationale behind it? Uh, and then I'm going to go through the design, the stages it involves, and then at the end, our concluding thoughts on what our unique selling points are, what are we doing uh, differently, what, what innovation have we brought to the transition space and what we have learned from this process and keep applying to um, to future iterations of this program. So to give you the context for uh, this uh, hybrid transitions program, we are in student support. So by definition, we are student centered. We want to foster a culture that is student focused, student at the heart of everything we do. But this is also aligned with DCU strategic uh, plan goal one, which is provide a transformative student experience. So we are not working uh, in a silo or in a vacuum. It is a goal of DCU to provide a transformative student experience, to put the student at the center. And we do this through developing multidimensional skills, um, encouraging extracurricular engagement, and putting a focus in our case on enhanced transitions and supporting the student through the transition. Uh, in terms of transition, that is going to be a key word throughout my presentation. We want to move from orientation as an event to transitions as a process. So in the past, the way we would have understood orientation would be maybe if you could picture 500 students sitting in a lecture hall being talked at for two hours or two days and that's done that's you transitioned to university we now understand transitions as a process the students go through a cycle it can be a year long it can take a couple of years for the student to transition into university and successfully settle into university and our goal with this program is to provide a framework a scaffold to sort of accompany the student along the way and to help them build the skills they need uh, for this transition, for successful transition, and also build confidence in their skills to transition successfully into university. And success with an asterisk there, whatever success means to the student, that's a very personal concept. Um, a big part of this project is also um, the digital affordances accelerated by the pandemic and we we as adding many as many of you probably did we sort of went into a frenzy of moving online uh, when the pandemic hit and when we went into lockdown i have to say we were early adopters in this we already had a lot of digital resources um and we sort of used that to build this transitions program out of those skills and out of that context under uh digitcom3 um developing integrating re-elaborating digital content. So this is the context in which this uh, program is situated. Um, in terms of design, we want it to be um, in all of these spaces, basically, we wanted to have the best of all worlds. We wanted to be in the digital space. We also wanted to be in the physical space. We wanted to have uh, good quality asynchronous activities that the students could work through at their own pace to create that independence, that uh, self-motivated learning that we aim to achieve at university. And we also wanted uh, synchronous activities where students could join their peers. Uh, be it online or in person and feel part of a community, feel part of a group. 
So in trying to be in all of these spaces at once, we had different types of activities as part of this transitions program. We had self-paced Moodle interactive activities, many of them built on H5P, which some of you may be familiar with. Um, we had live Zoom webinars that were accessed through the main uh, Moodle platform where, where this whole um, program was, was housed, was located. We had self-directed campus and outdoors activities, and we had scheduled on-campus events that the students could register for and attend. So the Moodle page was um, at the foundation and was the, the, the house and the framework for everything we offered, but still we were not only in Moodle, we were also on campus, we were also in the students' own town in activities that they could do in their local environment. So again, trying to be in, in all of these spaces at once. So what, this, this, what did this program uh, look like? As I was saying, it is a phased transitions uh, program. Um, for three main stages for most students with a stage zero stage for, for some students. So if you look at the uh, itinerary there, stage zero would be a head start for mature students only. I'm gonna go into each of the stages uh, in a minute. Stage was stage one was discover uh, DCU, which is what would be the orientation part of the of the program. Stage two students have already gone through orientation; they are settling into university. We are offering life skills, so an introduction to skills that they will need to succeed at university, but also skills that we consider transversal and transferable. And then stage three again continuing that process of settling into university, uh, discover community. Students who completed all three stages opted to the DCU Engage Bronze Award, which is uh, an award that they can apply for for extracurricular engagement if they demonstrate that they are engaged in, in activities outside uh, their studies. So just to go through the stages of the program in more detail, stage zero is what we call Head Start. This is a stage that's targeted at mature students specifically, and the focus is on academic writing, digital confidence, and maths. This is a Moodle course uh, with interactive H5P content, several courses built on H5P. And there was also this year, there was a companion live event where students could register to attend uh, three days on campus, basically companion workshops to what was on the Moodle page, and then also meeting their classmates and meeting support staff and um, seeing themselves on campus and, and starting to live that student life. So a big part of Head Start um, would be building confidence and starting to build that sense of belonging we are basically trying to tell the students and again these are these are mature students who may be returning to university after a while we're trying to tell them you belong here you can do this um the next stage is discover dcu so this is this would be the orientation courses per se students get access to these courses, this courses up on acceptance. So they don't have to register with DCU as soon as they accept uh, their place here, they get access to these courses. So they can be, um, before they uh, register, working away at home on these online courses. You have the modules there, discover your DCU, university life, technology, and discover your well-being. Uh, these are all short courses with lots of interactive gamified activities. I'm going to give you a glimpse in a minute. There are also companion live events on campus during orientation. And this is content that they are given just in time when they need it. They are given this content online, but they also have an opportunity to revisit it throughout the year. It is there. It is their transitions hub on a model throughout the year that they can return to at any time. Um, again, also very much based on building belonging, confidence, that sense of community. You are welcome here. We have some elements that we have in this stage one orientation. We have interactive videos, and these are very, very short. I'm not sure if you can see the timestamp there, but we only gave our president a minute and a half, just straight to the point, welcome the students. Um, and we used H5P to make these videos interactive so that they could uh, answer questions about them to really capture their attention. 
uh, there's a gamification component where students can level up the more activities they complete, the more experience points, experience points they earn. And then um, I think there is a sort of hall of fame where the top achievers can earn real world prizes and gift cards and things like that. So there is that, that encouragement to complete your activities and work your way through the resources. Um, we, we, we have made an emphasis on healthy start interactive activities. So you can see on the right hand side there, right hand side there, there is a self assessment wheel that students can uh, answer some questions about where they are before they begin, and they can get that uh, self assessment of what their strengths are. And this is very much a strengths based approach. We don't want to come at this from a deficit based approach of what what you need and what you don't have and and where you don't measure up. It's really very much about what are the strengths that you are bringing to university and what are areas where you could maybe develop your strengths a bit more. You can see some activities on the left hand side there, virtual tours of the campuses and scavenger hunt competition, that roll, roll walk or run challenge 5k, which they could do in their own time and just submit some proof and being to win some merch. So just stuff to do um, around well-being and, and starting well. Um, this first stage of the Discover program also linked in with the program pages. So again, orientation, even though student support and development plays a big part in orientation, it's not something that we do on our own. It, it, also, it also connects with program specific orientations and the program pages would be uh, very much part of this program and students would be connected with their program pages where all students can develop this discipline identity and this sense of belonging with all the same students who are part of the same program. And again, uh, information about um, program orientation, online and physical events, and again, a hub that they can uh, over and over again come back to and revisit those resources and use them when they are useful to them. So that was stage two, that was the, the, the orientation uh, step stage of Discover DCU. After orientation, during the first week of the semester, we would move on to stage two, which is discover, discover life skills. We have another self-assessment wheel where students can answer some questions about where they see themselves in terms of self-management, digital skills, active learning, self-reflection, mindset, and self-efficacy. And that is going to tell them which areas they could stand to maybe uh, develop, which areas it might be beneficial for them uh, to maybe spend some more time reflecting about. And these are also H5P courses that they complete online in their own time, but there are also live companion workshops. So throughout the semester, for example, my remit would be the active learning courses. We develop those as online courses, but we also provide um, in-person live workshops throughout the semester that students can register for and attend. And students who complete all the courses can also uh, receive a digital, a digital badge and have that as one of their achievements. And finally, stage three, uh, this would happen at the end of semester one, beginning of semester two, and this is more about uh, being part of your community and, and yes, just cementing that belonging and that active involvement and engaging in your engagement in your community. So this includes an active consent module, bystander intervention training and tilt role play, students pick two out of three. And again, these courses are all housed on Moodle. So everything I have mentioned so far, everything is housed and built on model. We have decided to use that expertise that we have in-house and to also use these courses as a tool for students to start to develop their uh, ability to navigate model and their confidence around navigating in the virtual learning environment. It can be very new to many students. Some students may struggle with technology. Some students may uh, not have seen this particular version of a virtual learning environment. So they start to feel comfortable in Moodle as one space that they are going to be spending a lot of time in as students. So finally, just uh, some concluding thoughts and what we think are our unique selling points, what we feel that we have achieved with this program, basically. 
Um, so as I've said throughout the program, the program is inspired by an ethos of welcome, belonging and well-being. And the idea is to empower the students to create um, competent and confident students who can um, manage themselves, self-regulate, make decisions, become independent, uh, active learners, basically. Uh, we conceive transitions as pre- and post-orientation, so it is not just um, a moment in which you have transitions to university, it is a, it's a longer process, and we take into account the students' needs and we try to create materials that they can work through at their own pace and then revisit when necessary. It's about building affinity with DCU. It's about building belonging. Again, you are part of DCU. Um, uh, this concept uh, and, and there's section three of uh, transitions ecology. This is a wider space. Again, it's no longer uh, two hours in a lecture hall. This is a richer transitions ecology. Many activities to pick and choose from. You can engage in in all of them, in some of them. Um, more initiative, more independence for the students, and also for us, the potential to measure the impact thanks to technology. It's all on Moodle. We can go in there, see the reports, see when they are engaging, see how much time they are spending, see what they are engaging with and what they aren't, and what resonates and what doesn't. We also gather a lot of very detailed feedback, and we spend a lot of time combing through that feedback, seeing what worked, what didn't, what resonated with the students, what did students want to see more of? Um, so I think that's all I wanted to say. I I hope I've ha I've done the program justice, and I'm sure Rob can come in. And if I've missed anything, maybe Rob can come in and and add anything else. And I'm here if you would like. Those are our contact details. Uh, I'm here for any questions you may have. And I will hand over to you, Lisa. You're muted. Thank you very much, Rob. Lovely to be back and thanks for the invite. And even nicer to see so many colleagues from past and present, both from DCU, from ILTA and across ICGP. So my name is Lisa Donaldson. I am the Academic Programme Manager in ICGP and I'm joined today with by Ben, who, while Rob was my rock with regards to anything Moodle in DCU, Ben is, is doing that, uh, performing that role here in ICGP. Can't compete with Rob, sorry. <laughs> so uh, together, what we want to share with you today is a little bit about what we've done over the last six months to a year about um, embedding Moodle as the, I suppose, the main organizing structure around our postgraduate medical training. Whoops. Here we go. So um, just going back one. A little bit about just to set the scene, I'll try to fly through these slides, even though much as I would love to spend a long time uh, sharing all this with you. So ICGP is the professional body for general practice in Ireland. And in December 2020, they assumed responsibility for GP training from the HSC. And um, that GP training consists of a four year program, two years in our hospital based and two years are based in training practices. So previous to that, it was devolved to schemes themselves, nationally 14 of them, to organize the training. And what we did was bring it together into a national training program. So from June 2020, when I um, moved from DCU to here, what we were tasked with was developing a suite of centrally developed learning resources, which were accessible to all schemes, to, I suppose, Put some standardized learning content out there. The, as I mentioned, the central organizing mechanism was Moodle. All of our resources were hosted around Moodle. Um, so Moodle, uh, as well as the blended learning resources, this was a massive change for uh, the schemes. So supporting communication around that, collaboration, co-development um, of materials, that was really my focus over the last number of months. So really, really briefly, what I wanted to share was a couple of the pillars um, around that. So um, firstly, the development of the strategy itself, the e-learning strategy. I created an e-book, which uh, many of you know is one of my very favorite tools. 
to um, get across what we were trying to achieve uh, with regards to our blended learning approaches. In association with that were a series of newsletters with a learning technology focus. And as you can see, or see here, Moodle was very much at the forefront and every newsletter had a one minute Moodle segment ably provided by Ben. Uh, in conjunction with that, um, on Moodle itself, what we designed was an entire um, support hub, which would have resources for anything that schemes would need to do nationally with regards to Moodle and how they could best make the, the most of it. And as part of that, we developed a community corner and host monthly events so that um, schemes can come together, they can learn from us, but they can also learn from each other. And a, a key element of that is Ben doing a bit of a, a show and tell on different themes every month so that the schemes are continually learning. The, the training was not a once off. So um, we eventually launched uh, the first of our digital resources that went on stream in September of 22. So I briefly want to give you 30 or 40 seconds of what those look like before I hand over to Ben. I'm going to switch straight to here and bring you back. So, Dr. Stephen Brennan, your specialist topic is the Irish Health Service. There are two ways to apply for a medical card. Name them. Uh, online and hard copy. How many languages does the hard copy medical card form come in? Um, Irish and English. Correct. So I would just pause that there, much as I would love to share more with you. That just gives you a flavour of some of the blended learning resources which were developed within Articulate and uh, were hosted as SCORM objects then on our Moodle uh, site. So that was a really brief overview to some of the key technologies that, that we're using here with Moodle as the virtual hub, Articulate for development of learning resources, but Moodle also then supports the blend, which includes discussion forums at, and many other materials as well. So with that in mind, I'm now going to pass over to Ben, and he's going to share with you what he has done from to support scheme sites. Great, that's perfect. Thanks so much, Lisa. Yeah, so while Lisa was tasked with the uh, learning resources for trainees, um, it was kind of my job to figure out how can we use Moodle uh, for our schemes and our scheme administrators now that we've taken on all of these 13 training schemes into ICGP's central umbrella and support them uh, to use Moodle with in terms of administrative processes. <clears throat> Go to the next slide, thanks. Um, so our objective in GP training was, uh, so how can we actually support our scheme directing teams and our administrators, um, oops, sorry. that's all right, um, uh, with the rapidly increasing number of trainees that we have. So we needed a, a, a solution that was um, scalable. And uh, we also wanted to standardize uh, the administrative processes across each of the 13 schemes who were uh, previously each doing uh, all of their administrative tasks uh, completely independent from each other. Um, so now that we're bringing them under our umbrella, we wanted a standardized tool that was also bringing them into the 21st century. Um, some of the schemes previously uh, would have been using hard drives for their documentation collection and um, or even file collection. And uh, so so bringing them into the 21st century with with a tool like Moodle for uh, not just learning resources that Lisa is working on, but also in terms of administrative tasks. So uh, if you go to the next slide, um, our game plan was that we were going to provide each of the uh, scheme teams with access to their own Moodle course, okay? And then we would use this Moodle course kind of as a, cent uh, a central hub, which was like a smart website that each of these uh, separate training schemes around the country would use for administrative purposes. Um, when we were doing this, we decided to stop using the term course 
and start using the term uh, scheme site on Moodle. And this made it more approachable for the administrative teams and made it sound less academic, like this is only where we host SCORM packages or online modules, but really this is an administrative tool. Um, so uh, we created a, a template for each of these sites and uh, that then the schemes could adapt and uh, these Moodle courses are quite flexible so that they can uh, each be unique to the schemes which are all over the country. And then uh, the, the last part of the game plan was to train up the scheme directing team so that they were comfortable using Moodle and then uh, finally get our, our trainees enrolled and go live. Uh, but we let the, the schemes themselves determine when they were ready to go live. Okay, next slide please, thanks. So how did we actually do this in terms of the implementation plan? Um, so ICGP, uh, historically a membership organization, already had its own Moodle instance um, set up for our um, continuous professional development courses that we, we uh, deliver to our members, um, so education courses. Uh, when we took over training, we created a new category for GP training. And within that, we made a subcategory for each of the 13 schemes. Uh, and within the subcategories, we then dropped uh, a scheme site. Uh, and that's where we granted the, uh, the teacher permissions for all of the uh, administrators and scheme directing teams there. Um, we use our website, uh, or our website and our database for enrollment, um, and uh, that holds all the training information. I'll get in. It does create some challenges for us, uh, which I'll get into a little bit more detail at the end of the presentation. Um, then, for all of our scheme sites, they use the same template, which uses the uh, tiles course format. And I was excited to see that uh, Alicia was showing that you guys also use the ski, uh, the tiles format in, in DCU for a lot of your courses, which is. It was exciting. I do think it's a it's, it's a gorgeous format that uh, gets rid of the endless scroll of death, um, and especially when we're using things uh, when we're using these courses as like a website, it does kind of have that website look and feel where if you click on uh, one of the tiles, it then expands uh, to show you everything that's in there. So I think it does serve serve um, that purpose really well. So in terms of our, our training plan, we have about eighty individuals across thirteen schemes who needed training. <clears throat> so initially, what I did was I organized training. Uh, with each scheme one at a time, just to cover the, um, the basic Moodle ABCs. Uh, you know, logging in, turning your editing on, what is Moodle, just telling them what it is and just getting them really comfortable so that they understand, uh, you know, what, what, this, what this tool can do um, and how they can customize it to make it, you know, fit for purpose for, for their own individual scheme. Um, then we also put a emphasis on uh, group restrictions. Um, this was to avoid having to create a separate scheme site for each of the year programs. So there are four uh, different training years uh, going on in any, at any scheme at any time. Um, so by putting an emphasis from the beginning on group restrictions, it helps them visualize the scheme site as a tool that can really be used as a central hub, where uh, <clears throat> if you add a group restriction for any individual uh, activity or resource you put up, you can be sure that the user is only going to have access to the things that are relevant to them. So that was an important thing for us to, to, to emphasize. And uh, also, we, we did expect that when we first started kicking off this Moodle training program, um, the most useful immediate tool would just be as a document repository where uh, you know trainees can access the important documents that they need. Um, and then once we identified uh, some of those on each scheme who were uh, kind of going to take the lead for their scheme on Moodle, uh, we went into further training sessions to focus on um, assignments uh, where they can collect uh, the trainee documentation. And uh, this all helps to avoid emails, of course, uh, and trainee logbooks, and uh, it helps organize the documentation going forward. So um, other, other uh, things we focused on were using attendance, uh, which, which they had been doing manually across all the schemes. So this is a great way to, to improve that for them. Um, quizzes, discussion boards, communications, uh, all, all things I'm sure you're familiar with. And then um, also some of the schemes have really uh, loved looking into student folders, which I'll, I might even be able to show you a little bit at the end uh, of that. The last thing in terms of training was uh, Rob helped us put together a digital support hub um, for our staff and admin, which is just a great place where they can find any of the information they need on uh, how to run their scheme sites. All right, perfect, thanks. Um, so this is a work in progress, of course. Um, as of what well, we started training all of these schemes at the beginning of the summer and by uh, September we had almost all of them live and then in October all 13 schemes were live with trainees actually accessing the sites. Um, <clears throat> at the moment we have six or seven of the schemes who actually have significant regular use of Moodle scheme sites and are using them uh, for lots of various tasks administratively besides just uh, a repository for documentation. Then we have about four or five of our schemes who do engage, but that's really the main purpose they use it for is just that they put documents up there and trainees will go and uh, find it there rather than emailing. Um, so they're on track, 
but uh, you know, there's much more they can get out of Moodle. Um, and then uh, lastly, we have one or two uh, schemes who just really haven't been able to manage uh, to get up and running with, uh, with, with Moodle yet, but we, we, we know they'll get there eventually. It's just, we have a lot on at the moment. So, uh, you know, they've, they've asked if we can, you know, just push it further into the spring. Um, if you want to go on then, you, oh, did we go too far? Perfect. Um, so one of our focuses for this year is going to be uh, inter-scheme collaboration. Uh, and we, we've already noticed that a lot of the schemes, uh, you know, when they meet and share ideas with each other is when uh, a lot of the, the best ideas are brought forward and, uh, and they're bouncing ideas off each other. It's been really great so far. Um, so what we want to do is give them uh, a great platform to showcase what works and what doesn't on their own scheme. And this is uh, when our community corner um, is, has, has really been a great thing for us. Um, so at least put together the community corner event, which we run every month about. And um, at this event, uh, we, we give them updates on everything that we're doing and then allow uh, you know, a show and tell and a sharing of ideas between uh, those who join who can share everything that they have going on in Moodle. We also are trying to encourage schemes to contact each other directly, uh, which has never really been done in ICGP's history, not so much at least. Um, but now that all the training happens uh, under our umbrella, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's great that we can give them the chance to, to work together and collaborate more. So um, lastly, we're gonna give them, uh, well, we, we've, we've started discussions about giving the schemes uh, uh, guest access to each other's sites. Um, and I do think that, that will happen, uh, but it's going to be on a scheme by scheme basis, whether they give permission for that to happen or not. Okay, and then uh, it'd be exciting if they start sharing question banks too, but I think that's, a, that's another topic for exams. Um, so uh, some of the key challenges, in our case, single sign-on has been a blessing and a curse. Um, our trainees actually don't have ICGP email addresses. So they all use their own uh, individual accounts. And uh, our solution in order to make sure that our cohort sync enrollment was working properly and always dependable, and also to have a single sign-on uh, that avoided multiple uh, you know, usernames and passwords floating around, we have a single sign-on uh, that goes through our website database uh, and then back into Moodle which has really created some challenges for us in terms of uh, communications because there's no actual email address associated with the users uh, when they log into Moodle. Um, so it's been a blessing and a curse. Um, we have managed to use our internet provider to, or, or, sorry, our website provider to help us uh, develop an API that sends, it reads the email coming from Moodle and then uh, attaches it to the user on the website and then sends it to their email address. But it's really uh, one dimensional, one directional and, uh, and the, the view itself uh, of the emails isn't perfect. Um, so, so that's one of the challenges we'll be working on. Then there are, uh, there's significant changes happening in college at the moment. It's one system after another that we've been introducing as a part of this shift over to uh, having the, all the training schemes come into college. So uh, as you saw, one or two schemes just really haven't been able to get to using Moodle yet, which is, which is fine and that's totally acceptable. Um, but uh, that'll be one of the things that over time we hope to address. And then of course, varying levels of comfort and confidence with IT and web tools. Um, sometimes in the trainings, you know, people will have issues, even if I say copy the URL from, from the browser, they're, they're not even sure what that means. And then you have other people who are just flying. So it's just an array of, of levels of comfort and uh, competence on, online. So you always have that when you're, when you're training people to get comfortable with this. All right. So I'm just going to make sure I speed up so we have time here. So uh, I'll pass that over to, to Lisa. And uh, so I can get you, uh, she'll, she'll go through some of the feedback while I get ready to show you what our scheme sites look like. Thanks, Ben. So as you can see, I mean, I opened with that it's been a massive change and it has been a massive change, but it's been really positive. Um, certainly all 13 of 13 schemes have engaged relatively meaningfully, both with Moodle and, and the blended learning resources, the centralized resources. So I've just popped up on screen just some of the feedback that we've received from surveying both our schemes, a scheme director, scheme directing teams, our trainees. Um, and I have to say it's been overwhelmingly positive. It is a lot of change and it does need a good degree of change management and support. Um, but I think overall it's it's really been quite successful. So at this point, I'm going to stop sharing. And Ben has about one minute to show you uh, the back end. Yeah. Well, I've gotten permission from one of the schemes to show you at least the front end of the back end. So um uh, I'll show you what one of the scheme sites looks like without going into the sections and really, um, you know, showing any trainee or, or scheme information. But here's uh, one of the, this is our Donegal training scheme. 
And here's the uh, scheme site that they've put together, just so you can have a look at some of the ways they're using it. They, uh, they have their timetables in there, um, either as, as files or as web pages, which are easier for them to update. Um, then here they have a scheme, uh, CKT, that's our clinical knowledge test, which is our big ICGP examination. Uh, and they have a practice version of that actually embedded into their scheme site, which is great to give their trainees practice. Then another thing is logbooks. So they have their CSCT documents, which is all the documentations they need to upload. Uh, typically those would have been collected via email, but now they're able to upload them here onto the scheme site, which is a great tool. And then loads of document repositories, um, student folders uh, where trainees can share in, uh, you know, uh, files with each other, which, which has been a great tool that this scheme in particular has really loved, uh, you know, feedback sections, uh, presentations. So uh, just to give you a look at everything we've been talking about in terms of uh, these scheme sites or these these smart websites that the that the schemes have at each each of the training schemes. So, is that okay. Thanks, thanks a million. So we're we're more than happy to take any questions that you have. I haven't been having a look at the chat, so um, yeah. Rob, you might direct me. Also.